Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. The Austin Strangler's back. We're going to talk about my favorite trade today, the Straddle Strangle Swap. Today we're talking more so about the double diagonal. Anyway, uh, Roaring Kitty is back in the news. Uh, he's uh, evidently Chewy's in play now. Uh, they're trying to short squeeze this stock like they did to GameStop. You know, him and all the people that follow him. So I guess he announced, I think it was probably last Thursday or last Friday at noon that he took a position in the company. He bought options. Uh, but anyway, you can see that on the news that, it, you know, it jumped immediately to almost $40. But so I presume he's still in unless he sold into that jump. And that, you know, and that doesn't even hardly seem fair. I, I There's no way. he's He's got to still be in. So usually his game plan, like, so let's look back at GME. Because I have, I didn't make any slides, but I have a way that I really like to play meme stocks and earning stocks. Uh, and I thought you guys might like it. So, but this one's for option bros only. Uh, if you If you don't trade options, you probably won't like this. But if you do trade options, check it out. It's a, I think this is a nice way to play meme stocks. And I'll be back with the general interest videos uh, later. Somebody asked about my J video today. Yes, I have it. And I'm still editing all the stuff from New York. I'm, uh, I'm, I was, I've been behind and I've just barely got caught up on the spreadsheets this morning. I was up till uh, 2 o'clock last night working on the spreadsheets and they're still messed up. I got up this morning and they're still jacked up and they still look like shit. Anyway, but the data is all there. Uh, it just, when you miss a couple of days, I, I had to go back and recreate a bunch of stuff. Anyway, the J interview is coming, uh, but we'll, we'll shoot for tomorrow. It's a great interview. I can't wait for you to see that. Okay. So let's talk about this, this beam trade here. Let's go back. So I believe what happened here is this. This was the initial jump when, uh, when he announced that he was taking a position. I believe... And then a few days later, lo and behold, it jumps again. Usually there's an initial jump. I'm waiting for the second jump to get out. You know, the, the second the second time it goes. And I don't remember. It may have been that it probably jumped here when he announced the position the first time. But it went sideways for a while. Then, then they tried to get it going again. Um, okay, so now they're trying to get Chewy going. So I made a video on this at the time. This The same type of strategy, the Tress uses uh tres which is that uh the uh the fund that jay's not very happy with but it's it's the one defiance fund that's kind of lagging the you know iwmy jpy triple qy usoy they all look really good trust not so much anyway so the caveat is this is the same option strategy and i actually talked to jay about this option strategy in new york uh, and about using it on earnings and stuff we didn't talk about meme stocks but anyway let me show you what what I like to do. Um, it looks like there was two jumps, probably when the news first came out at noon on Thursday, it looks. And then it jumped again this morning on the open. There was probably more news about it. Okay, so let's go over to option strat. Now, there's a couple of reasons this, this trade can work. I don't recommend trades, of course, but but I do like this kind of trade. And there's a couple of reasons it can work on meme stocks and earning stocks. The first reason is there's a lot of liquidity. When a stock is in play, and, and as soon as Roaring Kitty buys calls, a lot of other people buy calls. Not to mention market makers are forced to sell calls to the people buying calls. So when they sell a call to someone, they buy stock to offset their call. Jackson, please knock it off. He's chewing on a hanger. Hang on just a second. It's okay, Jackson, but you don't have to chew on the hanger, okay? Okay, so the first reason this kind of trade uh, can be a good trade well, is, is the liquidity. So let's just, what I always start with the double diagonal. That's kind of the base. That's kind of the base option position for either the straddle strangle swap or the ratio diagonal. But they're, they're all related trades. They're, they're all similar. Okay, so the first reason this works is look how liquid, look how liquid these options are. Let me let me make it, let me make a, a trade that I might like. Just okay. So there's a I just looked at that really quick. So and this is looks like a pretty good looking trade. So this has an eight cent bid ask spread. That's actually not bad. And you know, there's 
there's plenty of volume and there's plenty of open interest or actually there's not a whole lot, but it's good enough. Um, six cent spread, tons of volume, tons of open interest. Uh, a little volume, a little open interest, eight cent spread. In other words, you wouldn't do this on a normal day, but whenever a stock's in play on GameStop, the spreads were even tighter than that. So the other reason that this could potentially work is because these calls are because of the call skew. These people are jumping in. I don't even know what strike uh, Roaring Kitty bought. I was going to look it up, but I don't even really know if it, it matters. I'm not trying to get his strike. I'm just trying, what, I, what you're trying to do when you choose a strategy, you have four legs. Usually I just put the short put and the the long put just basically at the money. Just to, just leave them there. That kind of, that, uh, that just kind of holds a place there. <clears throat> But then what I do is I, I roll the, the short call out as long, as far as I dare. So this expires on Friday and this is going for 57 cents. That's, that's obscene. 183 Delta. You can see the Delta or, or you can see the, I mean, the uh, IV, the IV is only 167 there. The IV gets higher as the price goes higher because, you know, this has crazy call skew. That's what we're trying to monetize. So we're going to take that one and sell that earn that 57 cents and then buy and then we buy a call in the next week. So that something like that would work. That's, that's basically just a double diagonal. That's not a ratio diagonal. That's just a double diagonal. But what I did is I varied the length. I varied where I put the strike prices to make it where it had no upside risk. We don't want upside risk in a trade like this. You can enter this on tasty trade or think or swim. All four legs is, is one is one trade and you can enter it as a, as a limit. That's a, that's in fact, that's the best way to do it. Do not do this as a market. There's four legs. Do it as a limit. Okay. Now here's what you're trying to, here's what the trade. So that's the profit and loss graph at expiration. If, if nothing happens, the volatility stays the same. Okay. So what you're actually playing for this, this could also be called a, um, well, it wouldn't be called that, but this is a long volatility position. You, you're betting that volatility will stay at the level it's at and hopefully increase. So look at the profit and loss graph of volatility just goes up 20%. I mean, you're, you know, your go nowhere price right now, your go nowhere price, if volatility stays the same as you make about 80 bucks on about 160 bucks of risk, you know, there's about a 50% return for going nowhere. That's huge. Not to mention there's a buffer. You have there's a buffer before you start losing money on the downside. Market has to drop more than six percent before you start losing money. So if you're if you're playing this trade and then maybe tomorrow Roaring Kitty, you know, tweets again and, and there's speculation that he's rolled out into the next week or something, volatility will jump 20% or what you know, whatever. It'll it'll jump by some degree, and then time will pass also. So we can, we can model that. So here's, here's Wednesday. Here's the middle of the week. Volatility's going up. Let's say maybe he's announced his position. You know, depending on where the stock goes, if it goes really high, you're going to be pissed because you're only going to make a hundred bucks, but, but that's better than having loss on the upside. And what you're really thinking is what you're really aiming for is the short strike, which is 30, because if it goes you know, as it gets closer to expiration, as it goes there and the volatility increases, which is what we expect when we're making a trade like this. If we think volatility is going to decrease or if it does decrease, collapse on us, we've lost. That's how this trade beats us. This is not a directional trade. It's a it's a volatility trade. It's omnidirectional. It can make money going, you know, if it goes down sideways or up, um, just as long as it doesn't go down too much. Okay. So that's not a bad way to play it. You can, let's look at the deltas on this. It only costs you $164, you know, dollars. Max profits only is only $221, but the odds are, this is a way of, what I'm trying to show you guys is a way to sell premium. This is a, a short premium strategy, which brings money off the market, not moving, but at the same time, it has, it's also has a long volatility component to it. So in a meme stock or even an earning stock, I like to do this a lot of times on like do it on Lululemon two weeks before they announce earnings. 
put a trade like this on Lululemon, lots of times Lululemon will rally into earnings or, or, and almost always the volatility will increase. That's what you're playing for. And if you can get volatility and increase at the same time, a stock rallies, you know, these can be really appealing trades. Okay. But yeah, the four legs, you know, there's the put these puts, it's hard to, you, you can also do this kind of trade without using four legs. I'm going to show you guys another way to do it. So let's do this. Let's just, let's just remove the put legs. Okay. We have a very similar looking profit and loss graph. What you generally have to do is move these strikes in a little bit closer. So that's our long strike. We'll move that to 25 and a half, which is right at the money. Then maybe we'll write the 27 and a half. That brings in 86 cents. And then that offsets partially the $2 and 11 cents. This is going to cost us. Okay, so what does that do for us? Same thing. It makes it it makes us have a trade or a similar thing where if the market goes nowhere, this trade makes 50 bucks on $120 risk. Okay. If the market goes, you know, if the market, if well, okay, and volatility goes up. Let's say volatility goes up. Okay, volatility goes up, the go nowhere price doubles from 50 bucks to 110 bucks plus the buffer that, you know, the buffer goes to 10% on the downside. Okay. So this is a long volatility trade, but you also make money. You monetize the market, not moving. Um, let's think about it this way. Here's another. So, well, let's, let's look at this way. Here's another way to prove it's a long, it's a, oh, shoot. Um, Gosh darn it. All right. I forgot to renew my, I need to renew my bill on here. The theta is it's, uh, I need to put, I need to put my credit. I need to pay the bill on there. So that shows the theta. Um, but in any event that, that is, I was just trying to show you guys, that is a theta positive trade. You can look at the theta here. The theta on this one is nine. You're spending nine, but you're bringing in 18. See, you make 18 theta, but you spend nine on the one you buy. So it's that's that's a positive theta paid trade. That means this trade makes nine dollars between today and tomorrow. In theory, that's the dollar amount this trade will make. Other things being equal over the next day. OK, so, yeah, this is I mean, but this is a tiny trade. Of course, the good thing about all this liquidity um, and the good thing about free, you know, nowadays you have free uh, free commission most places. Um, you know, if, if it's some, if you have a, if you really like this trade a lot and you want to make some money, do it a hundred times. You know, the commission won't matter. Now you're risking 10,000 bucks, but your go nowhere price is, you know, your go nowhere price is depending on when you take it off. Even if you wait till like Thursday and it goes nowhere, you're up $2,000. If you get a little pop between now and Thursday in price, it can be worth $9,000. If you get a pop in price and volatility, it could be worth $12,000. There's no loss, no possibility of loss on the upside other than an opportunity loss, other than it'll piss you off. So that's another way to do it. Okay. So you can do a four-legged double diagonal. You could do a two-legged diagonal, roughly the same thing. Now I'm going to go back down to one just so we can make apples to apples comparisons. But the same, if you if you have a small account, this is a great newbie trade because um, you can't lose that much, and 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 you're making theta. The odds are it's, the odds are slightly in your favor. The market doesn't have to move for you to make money, but if it does move, you can make more money. You know, it, it has all the hallmarks of a great uh, newbie trade, also in my opinion. Now, let me show you another way to do it. If this isn't aggressive enough, if you're like hell no this thing's going to be at a hundred, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, you know, make 84 bucks and be happy when I could have made, you know, thousands. And I, I get that. So that's the first way I learned to play uh, meme stocks. In the old days, a meme stock was a stock that was getting taken over. I've told you my story about when United Airlines got taken over, they were going to get taken over. Trump made a bid. Uh, my dad and I bought calls or my dad bought calls and split them with me. And we made a lot of money. Now, but that's the ultimate newbie way to do it. When you're buying calls, you're paying the time decay and the odds are definitely not in your favor, especially on a meme stock. 
because you're buying the call after the volatility is already super high. When you buy a call, that's also a long volatility play. But but anyway, volatility collapses, you, you know, you're toast. But the good thing about buying a call is your, your profit is unlimited. So you can make, you know, multiples. You don't, you won't make 50% or 40%. You can make 400% or 500% in theory. So that's the trade-off. It's like anything else. Okay. So if this isn't aggressive enough for you, you can turn this into a ratio diagonal, which is the trust trade. Okay. So watch this. You go to option trade. You have to click this unlink legs first, but then you make, you just, oh gosh. Okay. You do this one twice. Okay. Oh, not three times. Okay. You do it twice. So that costs you $422. Okay. Well, the only good news about the $422 is you're selling this call that's further out of the money. That's obscenely high. You're almost getting a hundred bucks for it. So that comes off the $422. What does that do for you? That basically makes you have a trade with no time decay. This profit and loss graph is the same profit and loss graph as you would have if you bought stock. That's actually like stock down to down to other other than the fact stock will keep losing money at the same rate. And this does uh, level off at three hundred and twenty two dollars. But that right there is basically that's a way you can trade options in theory without paying time decay. If you just buy the call. Watch this. If you just buy the call, you're asking the market to move seven point or eight point five percent before you make any money. Now, granted, you can make a lot of money though. Uh, but like I say, there's a trade-off. You can do it this way though. Market doesn't have to move, just like stock. Market moves up a dollar, you make a hundred bucks. Down a dollar, you lose a hundred bucks. This is this is basically the profit and loss graph of stock. Okay, but. Unlike stock, stock doesn't make money as doesn't make more money as volatility goes higher. So this is simulate stock, but it simulates stock that makes more money. So even if the price doesn't move up, but as long as it stays in the news and as long as the volatility keeps creeping up on Chewy, you know, this trade could turn into a trade uh, where it where it can actually add buffer to it. It doesn't start with buffer, but if volatility increases, it manifests itself. But, and, and volatility increases all the time on stocks like this. That's one be out of the realm of possibilities that we wake up tomorrow and devolves trading. But, you know, it's a 120 today and it's a 170 tomorrow. That could easily happen. And let's say the stock really didn't move. Or, I mean, it probably will move if volatility is like that. But let's say it didn't move up that much. Let's say it just went up to 28 or something. Still a nice profit for you, especially when you consider this is a theta positive trade. You guys know that I've never met an option I didn't want to sell, that I'm a big believer in. You have to work the, you have to constantly be working the decay of the options. You can use the decay that the options market provides if you know how to sell them and you know how to hedge your risk, but you can do a trade where you can bring in some time decay and at the same time have some other positive qualities like express a long volatility view in the market, you know, in a meme stock or an earning stock, then especially when you think that volatility might increase. Okay. So if, if volatility collapses on a, on a trade like this, you know, your max loss is 324 and you probably just ought to figure that you, you're going to lose it. If volatility collapses, let's just collapse volatility 30%. I mean, you, if the price doesn't move, you only lose a hundred dollars you still can't lose more than $322. No matter what volatility does, your, your initial uh, max loss is locked in. But like I say, if volatility goes up, not even that much, up 30%, it can put you in a really favorable position. Okay. And so you can just hang on to it because you don't have to worry about time decay bleeding you to death, right? So a guy could just hang on to it and then it expires on Friday, but maybe between now and Friday, you know, this thing will short squeeze to $40 or something. And if it does short squeeze to $40, you know, you could turn $300 into $1,300. Wonder if it short squeezes to a hundred. I mean, it, it's possible. Anyway, the thing is um, you, the thing that I'm trying to show you guys, and I think, I think you guys get it. And the other influencers talk about this constantly too. Is you got to be on the selling side of options. In my opinion, on the other hand, the guys that buy options have all the fun. 
So you have to, so that's why I've come up with, not me, uh, people before me, lots of people, racial diagonals. Um, there's lots of trades where you can, where you can uh, still make a, make an income off the grind, off the markets, off the, like Jay always says, you know, the one thing he knows is tomorrow comes after today. So I always like to have an element of the trade that monetizes that. And in this case, that 27 and a half short call that I'm selling for 92 cents, that monetizes that. But then these two 25 and a halves, they take advantage of the opposite thing if, if, if price explodes. So I'm just using the, how expensive this call is to offset how expensive this call is as well and make, and make me have a way to express a bullish or a long volatility opinion in a meme stock without bleeding to death. I mean, it, to me, it makes sense. I don't know. Tell me the way you guys like to do meme stocks. I mean, it's definitely a lot of work. You could definitely, it'd definitely be easier if you just didn't want to screw with it. It'd definitely be easier just to pick whatever you can lose. Like in that other trade, you could have lost. It was $322 was the max loss. Um, hang on here. So, Here's another way to do it. And this is a legit way to, I'm not. Okay. Um, just pick what you can lose. You know, let's, let's say you to make the equivalent trade. The other trade was about a $300 loss. A guy could do. Well, let's see. I always like to do two so I can sell half when one of them as they make money hope hopefully if it goes if it goes your way yeah something like that two of those is the same is the same dollar risk of trade okay now if you do it that way you don't have exposure to volatility it doesn't matter what volatility does like the other trade the other trade when you're doing the diagonal and you're you're selling in one week and then buying in the back week behind it that gives you the long volatility exposure, which can be good on a meme stock if you want it. If you don't want it, you don't care, you just want to do something easy, you just buy this, you know, just buy an option, but just be aware it's 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 like a lotto ticket. You're gonna lose $350 in all but 87% of the or 77% of the cases, it looks like. Uh, I'm by eyeballing it. I'll re-up, uh, I'll put uh I'll uh I'll put my credit card down so we have the chance of profit again. I think when I went to New York, it's probably, well, the damn hotel hasn't sent my deposit back yet. That's exactly what it is. That really is the truth. They wanted a deposit for incidentals. Okay, well, that's great. Well, guess what? They don't even have a mini bar. Unless I watch dirty movies, I'm not going to have any incidentals. I didn't watch dirty movies. Who watches dirty movies in a hotel when you have a laptop and you pay for Wi-Fi? And I didn't watch dirty movies on my laptop either, but if I wanted to watch dirty movies, I'm going to open up my laptop. I mean, I think the hotel, uh, the hotel dirty movie business is a dying, is a dying business. I guess it's for travelers that don't have laptops. I mean, you got to do what you got to do. I mean, uh, and also I guess for travelers that don't have laptops, I was, uh, I was offered by one, uh, young lady, her, uh, company for the night about one o'clock in the morning, she wanted to come up to the room. Uh, anyway, I told her no, but I guess that's what you do if you don't bring your laptop. All right. Let's see what else we got. Um, but yeah, so do just do either one of these trades. Uh, if you, if you don't want to mess with it, this is a, this is a perfect way to do it. I would just say that this way right here is not as good here. Let's do this. Okay. I just think this is a more appealing trade. I, I It's the same risk, $321. You can enter it as one trade. It's, um, it's just a diagonal. It's, it's not, it's not hard. You, even the four legged trade isn't hard and these things are so liquid. I don't really have any problem getting fills. Well, I do these all the time in earning stocks. Um, but you'd have a problem getting a fill if you did it in something that wasn't liquid, uh, but 
this little two-legged trade, do this one two times, buy that one twice, sell this one once, give yourself a synthetic stock position, but unlike stock, you don't have unlimited loss. I mean, it's a real appealing trade. But I tell you what, my favorite out of all of these is the way I'm going to probably do it. I just heard about it just now. I, I shot the video as soon as I heard that. Uh, I know it happened last week, but I didn't. I didn't hear about last week. As soon as I heard Roaring Kitty was in was in Chewy, I thought it'd be fun to do one of these. I, I do have some option traders, and I think there are some of you guys that could that could benefit off this. But I, I like it. This is the way. This is when I do it. I'll let you know what what I do when I do it. But when I do it, it's going to be. Something like that. You know, a hundred dollars. That's you know, so you have a thousand that you wanna that you wanna spend. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, you you know, for every thousand dollars, you could do ten of these spreads for every thousand dollars. Like I say, remember, volatility goes down, you still can't lose more than a thousand dollars, but it's just gonna make it way easier for you to lose. So volatility could easily collapse thirty percent if it came out tomorrow that Roaring Kitty was already out of these or something. You know, it just bank on that. Bank on it to collapse fifty percent, and then bank on the stock price to drop ten percent also. So I mean, you could figure, just figure on a full loss if that happens. Okay. But if it comes out and he's still in it and volatility bumps and some more time passes, you can get out of this with the profit. Like I say, let me know how you guys like to do it, but that's probably my favorite way of the three. But I thought it'd be interesting to show you all three, the double diagonal. So, I mean, there's nothing when you do it with the double diagonal, you can get more buffer on the downside. When you so when you use the four legged, there is advantages to using a four legged spread, but you can basically simulate it with two legs. That's what I was trying to show you with only the call leg of the calendars. Um, so here's here's another way. Here's I'll show you one more thing. I guess here's I'm trying to I'm trying to think how would we if wonder if we didn't believe we're in kidding, we wanted to fade the trade. I'm trying to find an attractive fade. I guess you could just do something. If you didn't believe him, you know, you could just do something like that and just hope it stays in the range. I, that trade doesn't look very exciting to me. Oh, but also if you don't believe him, volatility is going to collapse. So, yeah, that's probably not the trade. So if you don't believe them, let me think about it. But if you don't believe them, you would probably. Maybe just sell calls. Because this 30 call is still obscene. So we want to sell that. If you didn't believe them, maybe you could. I'm trying to think you could buy a higher call. I don't know. The, the call skew is so high to me. The It doesn't look, I can't find, I've, I really can't find a way that looks as attractive to fade. I mean, something like that would kind of be a way to call BS on it. Well, but like I say, except for the volatility component. Well, I don't know if you guys have a way to call BS on it. Maybe you just sell a call spread in this week. Watch this change expiration. All right. We're going to. Yeah, there we go. We're going to sell this. Well, we'll sell the same call. You remember that 30 call I said was obscenely expensive. 70, 70 cents now. But anyway, uh, we buy the 31 for 61 cents and make the dime or is that right? Uh, 
Oh yeah. <laughs> That's the thing. The prophet of loss is just the reason I wouldn't do this. Even if I did, did not believe him. The profit and loss just doesn't work out. I think it's because the call skew was so extreme. You you have to, I think you have to go the other way. I've just not found an effective way to fade it uh, yet. Anyway, let me know if you guys have one. Um, I'm usually a trend player. I'm usually trying to go with the, the with the trend. So I'm not usually not a fader. There probably is a way to make money if you don't believe them. But uh, but I just, I, I can't lay my fingers on it right now. All right, guys. Well, I'm sorry there's no slides. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, which ones of you guys are still left? That'd be great. But I do have some traders out there, and I do know a few of you guys like to do diagonals and uh, racial diagonals, straddle, strangle swaps, and these types of things. So anyway, I'll be talking to you guys in the comments, and I appreciate your time. I appreciate everything. Have a good one.